assuming all the following forms. Umbrella? Who is he talking about? Krishna. Huh? Ananta Krishna. Yeah. Who else? Who, who's an, that's another name for him. Sankrishna. Krishna. Lord Bhavana. Huh? Lord Bhavana. Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda Bhavana. He serves Lord Krishna, assuming all the following forms, umbrella, slippers, bedding, pillows, garments, resting chair, <coughs> residence, sacred thread and throne. Text 124. Etur murti bedakari, Krishna sevakari, Krishna ra se sata pana se sanamadare. He is thus called Lord Shesha, for he has attained the ultimate end of servitude to Krishna. He takes many forms for the service of Krishna. And thus he serves the Lord. So, <clears throat> the Nanta Shesh is an expansion of Lord Balaram. Lord Nichananda is Balaram, but keep appearing in the Kali Yuga with Lord Chaitanya. Seta Ananta Yana Kahi Ekakala Hena Prabhu Nichananda Ye Ke Jane Tanakela that person of whom Lord Ananta, she, Lord Ananta is a Kala, or part of a plenary part, is Lord Nityananda Prabhu, who therefore can know the pastimes of Lord Nityananda. Text 126. Tanna ke ananta kai ki tanna mahima. From these conclusions, we can know the limit of the truth of Lord Nityananda. But what glory is there in calling him Ananta? Text 127. But I accept it as a truth because it has been said by devotees. Since he is the source of all incarnations, everything is possible in him. Text 128. Avatara avatari abedaye jane purve yache krishna ke ke ho kaho karimane. You know that there is no difference between the incarnation and the source of all incarnations. Previously, Lord Krishna was regarded in the light of different principles by different people. Text 129. <clears throat> Keho Kai Krishna Shaksha Nara Narayana. 
Kevakaya Krishna Haya Saksad Mana. <clears throat> some said that Krishna was directly Lord Narayana, and some called him Lord Ramana Deva incarnate. Text 130. <clears throat> Keho Kahe Krishna Shirtura Sai Avatara Asambhava Nahe Satcha Vachana Sabara. Some called Lord Krishna an incarnation of Lord Shri Dakshaya. <clears throat> All these names are true. Nothing is impossible. I got to Text 131. <clears throat> Krishna Yabe um, Avatare Savamsa Ashaya Savamsa Asitabe Krishna Te Milaya. When the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna appears, he is the shelter of all plenary parts. Thus, at that time, all his plenary portions join in him. Okay, we're doing this one together. Ye ye rupe jane se taha kahe. Ye ye rupe jane se taha kahe. Sakala sambhave krishne kichu nitya nahe. Sakala sambhave krishne kichu nitya nahe. Ye ye rupe jane se taha kahe. Ye ye rupe jane se taha kahe. Sakala sambhave krishne kichu Kichu Mityanahe Sakala Sambhave Krishna Kichu Mityanahe Yeye Rupe Jane Seta Kahe Yeye Rupe Jane Seta Kahe Sakala Sambhave Krishna Kichu Mityanahe Sakala Sambhave Krishna Kichu Mityanahe Ultimately, the controversy came to me, 
And I gave the decision that if someone says that the Ram in Hari Rama is Lord Ramachandra, and someone else says that the Ram in Hari, Krishna, Hari Rama is Sri Balaram, both are correct because there is no difference between Sri Balaram <coughs> and Lord Ram. Here in Sri Chaitanya we find that Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami has stated the same conclusion. Ye ye rupe jane se tahe ka kae sakara sambhave krishna kichu mitjanahe. If someone calls Lord Ramachandra to be the vibration Hari Rama, understanding it to mean, O oh Lord Ramachandra, he is quite right. <coughs> Similarly, if, if one says that Hari Rama means, O oh Sri Balaram, he is also right. Those who are aware of the Vishnu Tantra do not fight over all these details. In the Lagu Bhagavatam Rita, Sri Rupa Goswami has explained Krishna as being both Shiradakshai Vishnu and Narayan in the spiritual sky, and expanding in the quadruple forms known as Vasudeva, Sankasha, Prajuna, and Aniruddha. He has refuted the idea that Krishna is an incarnation of Narayan. Some devotees think that Narayan is the original personality of Godhead and that Krishna is an incarnation. Even Shankaracharya, in his commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, has accepted Narayan as the transcendental personality of Godhead who appeared as Krishna, the son of Devaki and Vasudev. Therefore, this matter may be difficult to understand, but the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, headed by Rupa Goswami, has established <clears throat> the principle of the Bhagavad Gita that everything emanates from Krishna. Who says in the Bhagavad Gita, what does he say? Aham Savasya Prabhu. Very good. Aham Savasya Prabhu Matasana I am the original source of everything. Everything includes Narayan. Therefore, Rupa Goswami in his Lago Bhagavatam Rita has established that Krishna, not Narayan, is the original personality of Godhead. In this connection, he is quoted a verse from Shrima Bhagavatam 3 to 15 that states, Svashanta Rupesh Vitarai Swarupa Avyar Dhammaneshra Anukam Pitatma Paravera Shomaram Sayutro Yajopi Jato Bhagavan Yatagni. When pure devotees of the Lord like Vasudeva are greatly disturbed by dangerous demons like Kamsa, Lord Krishna joins with all his past and expansions, <clears throat> such as Lord of Vaikuntha. And lo and born becomes manifest, just as fire becomes manifest by the friction of irony wood. Irony wood is used to ignite a sacrificial fire without matches or any other flame. Just as fire appears from irony wood, the Supreme Lord appears when there is friction between devotees and non-devotees. <clears throat> when Krishna appears, he appears in full, including within himself all his expansions, such as Narayan, Vasudev, Sankashan, Aniruddha, and Prajumna. Krishna is always integrated with his other incarnations, like Nishringade, Varaha, Vamana, Naran Narayan, Ayagriva, and Ajita. In Vrindavan, Lord Krishna sometimes exhibits the functions of such incarnations. <clears throat> in the Brahmanda Purana, it is said, the same personality of God who is known in Vaikuntha as the four-handed Narayan, the friend of all living entities, and in the milk ocean as the Lord of Swetadweet, and who is the best of all Purushas, appeared as the son of Nanda. In the fire there are many sparks of different dimensions. Some of them are very big and some are small. The small sparks are compared to the living entities, and the large sparks are compared to the Vishnu expansions of Lord Krishna. All the incarnations emanate from Krishna, and after the end of their pastimes they again merge with Krishna. Therefore, in the various Puranas, Krishna is described sometimes as Narayan, sometimes as Shuridakshai Vishnu, sometimes as Gabadakshai Vishnu, and sometimes as Vaikuntana, the Lord of all Vaikuntha. Because Krishna is always full, Mool Sankrashan is in Krishna. And since all incarnations are manifested from Mool Sankrashan, it should be understood that he can manifest different incarnations by his supreme will even in the presence of Krishna. Great sages have therefore glorified the Lord by different names. Thus, when the original person, 
the source of all incarnations is sometimes described as an incarnation, there is no discrepancy. Om it's very interesting. Um, God has many forms. Prabhupada said this Shishigonatai ki. There are as many incarnations of the Lord as there are waves in the ocean. The waves are constantly coming. So Krishna is unlimited. And it's very hard for us who are very conditioned souls especially when we first come to Krishna Consciousness, to understand how inconceivably different Krishna is from his parts and parcels, you and me. We're all very limited, and Krishna's unlimited. And so for us to understand Krishna is impossible, because he can't even understand himself. Because <laughs> his glory is always expanded. So we can't really understand Krishna very much, but we can get a tiny drop of an understanding by reading the Vedas, because Krishna says, Savasya Charam, Sri Sanavistha Matasmiti Gyalma Pahunam Cha, Vedasya Savera Hama Vidya Vedanta Krit Vedya Eva Chaham. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that free from me come knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. But by all the Vedas I am to be known. Indeed, I am compiled with the Vedas and the Nora of Vedanta. So if we want to know Krishna, we have to read the Vedas. <clears throat> the Vedas are unlimited. So you could spend many lifetimes studying the Vedas because the Vedas are still being written. Because the, uh, the devotees of the Lord, they are writing about Krishna. And because they're pure devotees, their knowledge is absolute, just like we hear uh, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Jiva Goswami. The Goswamis wrote so many books and reading those books is non different from hearing directly from Krishna because they're representing Krishna. So Prabhupada wrote Bhagavad Gita as it is. He, he gave an interpretation which some people may not agree with but because he was a pure devotee and he said he was just a postman delivering the letter, the message, therefore it is not different. And Prabhupada also said that I didn't write these books, actually Krishna dictated to me these books. So if we want to understand Krishna, we have to read the Vedas. <clears throat> we won't be able to read all the Vedas, not possible. Because even Jiva Goswami, he wrote 400,000 verses of uh, knowledge. Like the, the Bible is 33,000 verses. If you read the Bible, one is very thin paper, you've seen very thin paper versions of the Bible. Very thin paper and 33,000 verses. The Mahabharata is 110,000 verses. And Jiva Goswami alone wrote 400,000 verses. If you've ever seen the Mahabharata, the full edition, it's like that, thick, with thin pages. So that's 110,000 verses, so, you know, and that's one devotee. So, Krishna's unlimited, <laughs> is the bottom line. <laughs> but the most essential part of the Vedas are in the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charamrita. So these are the most important books for us to read. And when we read these books, we get an understanding of, you know, who is the most merciful form of God? Who is the greatest incarnation of God? So who is the greatest incarnation of God? Can you tell me? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Huh? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the greatest incarnation because he's giving love to Krishna. And devotees aren't really so interested in Shri Dakshay Vishnu or Narayan. In fact, the concept of uh, there's 
five types of liberation which are described in the early chapters of the Nectar of Devotion. There's five types of liberation, you know what they are? Sarupya. Sarupya means? Uh, same form. Same form. Another one? You don't know that? Sarupya. So look, yeah, yeah, what's that mean? They're in the same planet. Same planet? Shasti. Shasti. Same occurrences. Same occurrences. And. Sayuja. Sayuja. To merge into the Lord's existence. The Lord's existence. Samika. To live close to him. To live close to him, is that what you mean? Not sure. <laughs> this one to have the same opulences <clears throat> but we're not really interested in, in going to Vaikuntha to be with Lord Narayan even though Lord Narayan is the Supreme Personality of God see Srila Prabhupada he would say different things at different times so in this purport he's saying that you know Hari Rama can refer to either Lord Balaram or Lord Ramachandra, or even Lord Nityananda, but we're not really uh, devotees of Lord Ram. But if you're a devotee of Lord Ram, that's also perfect, because in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, there are several pastimes where devotees, specifically Murari Gupta, who was an incarnation of Hanuman, he was tried to be persuaded to be a devotee of Krishna, but he was too devoted to Lord Ram and he couldn't give up worshipping Lord Ram. So nobody's going to criticize him because he couldn't give up worshipping Lord Ram because that's already perfect. But the sages of Dandakaranya, they were very attracted to Lord Ram when they saw him in the forest. But Ram couldn't reciprocate with them. So, because he took a vow to only have one wife, Ekapani Vrata. So they appeared in, uh, Maha in Krishna's pastimes as the Gopas, along with many other uh, personalities who worshipped different forms of the Lord. But the Lord who couldn't reciprocate in that particular form the way they wanted him to. So they appeared as gopis in Krishna's Leela. And there was a conversation between uh, Lord Chaitanya and Vyankata Bhatt when, when Lord Chaitanya was touring South India. And there was a conversation about how Lakshmi couldn't enter into the Rasadars. So Lakshmi is the consort of Narayan, Lakshmi Narayan. And Lakshmi is already, you know, Vishnu Tattva. Vishnu Tattva means that she's perfect and an expansion of Radharani, ultimately, who's Krishna's consort. But she couldn't enter into uh, the Rasa dance because she worshipped the Lord as God. Whereas the gopis and the devotees of, the intimate devotees of Krishna, they don't worship Krishna as God, because God doesn't want to be worshipped as God. He wants to be loved as a little boy, or a lover, or a friend, because when people worship, God, there is a tendency to be full of reverence. And reverence is not conducive for ecstatic love. So therefore, <clears throat> Lakshmi couldn't enter the Rasa dance because she had this conception that was God was greater than her. So these mysteries are <clears throat> fully explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And the Chaitanya Charitamrita is considered to be the 
best literature. Because back to Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he said that there's only three books in this world. If all the other books were lost, three books are the most important. So which ones are they, you know? Yeah. Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charamrita. So he said if there are only two books in the world, two most important books are <coughs> Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charamrita. And if there was only one book, what's that? Chaitanya Charamrita. That's right. <laughs> so Chaitanya Charamrita <coughs> describes the activities of Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya is the <clears throat> supreme form of Krishna, pretending to be a devotee. So God's incarnations are unlimited, but the three most important incarnations, three most important forms of God, you know what they are? One Krishna, one Ram. Krishna is one, Lord Ram. Lord Krishna. Shri 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 that's right, yeah. Because we worship Lord and Shri Dev <coughs> to purify our hearts, to help us get rid of our material desires. Because He protects the devotee with the uh, wonderful pastimes of Him appearing as half lion, half man, Lord and Shri Dev. But most of that canto as I said the other day, is about Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj, he was a pure devotee. And in the fifth canto, <clears throat> the chapter where the residents of Jambal weep offer prayers to the Lord, one of the verses is how they are praying to Lord Nishringadev that with his nails he may destroy the material desires in the hearts of the devotees. So we worship Lord Nishri and Dave like that and also to give us protection. But it's falling in love with Lord Nishri and Dave is <laughs> he's very fearsome. But Lord Krishna, he is uh, the one that Lord, Lord Chaitanya was thinking of. Lord Chaitanya is the most wonderful incarnation. So when we meditate on Lord Krishna, we should also meditate on Lord Chaitanya. Because he is also showing us how to meditate on Krishna. So we cannot imitate Lord Chaitanya. Because Lord Chaitanya, even though he was pretending to be a devotee, his activities were also inconceivable. For instance, when he was going on his trip to South India, going to all the holy places. He went to many holy places, visited many temples of Shiva. So Shiva's also, he's a very important expansion of Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya offered respect to him because he went to all the, so many Shiva temples in South India. But, um, I forgot what I was going to say. It's performing inconceivable. Ah? Uh -huh. It was performing inconceivable activities. Yeah, right. So when he went, that's good. <laughs> so when he went on his tour, the, uh, the animals became infected by his love of Godhead, and he was able to uh, bring out their love, because every living entity, of course, has love of Krishna in their heart, even the animals. So when they saw Lord Chaitanya and he said, chant Hare Krishna, that pure love of Godhead manifested and they started chanting Hare Krishna. And then some parrots landed on his two wrists. There was a female parrot and a male parrot. <clears throat> and they started talking. 
and uh, the male parrot started to glorify Krishna. And then the female parrot started to glorify Radharani. So they were competing to see who could glorify their worshipful person the most. The male parrot was glorifying Krishna, and then the female parrot was trying to outdo his glorification of Krishna by glorifying Radharani. So these are all <clears throat> inconceivable things. But this is the first thing Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he said, the first thing you have to understand about Krishna is that he is a chincha. He's inconceivable and we can never understand Krishna. But the more you <clears throat> remain a devotee, the more you realize how inconceivable Krishna is. And uh, so this is a question of faith. And that's why people from different religions, they have different levels of faith. And they can accept God according to the level of faith. But God is, you know, he, He's a great personality. We don't really know anything about Him. We know He's great. So we worship Him as a great personality. And we're afraid of him because we know that there's a lot of suffering in this world and that if you don't worship God, you suffer. So they have this very uh, <clears throat> meager understanding of God. But Krishna, Krishna's devotees, they know that Krishna can do anything and that he does do so many wonderful things. Like it's described in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. Lord Chaitanya instructed Sarat Goswami and there's a very thick part of the Chaitanya Shanamrita where Lord Chaitanya is instructing Sarat Goswami <clears throat> and on the basis of these instructions he wrote different books like the Brihat Bhagavatam Rita which Prabhupada recommends we read if we want to know the science of loving Krishna it's an amazing book so in the Brihat Bhagavatam Rita, it describes the pastime of Krishna defeating Kali. So Kali was uh, a demonic mentality and he was in the form of a serpent with many heads. And so he was such, so venomous that even the birds when they were flying over the river Jamuna where he was because of the fumes from his poisonous hoods they would fall in the river and die. So he was very envious. So Krishna decided to purify him. So, but Krishna always does things in a very dramatic way. So he and when he jumped into the river, it looked as if he was in a very precarious situation. And even Balaram, because this is another aspect of Krishna, the Balaram is an expansion of Krishna. He's the first expansion. But Krishna, some, but sometimes Balaram, he gets bewildered by some of the things Krishna does. And he was worried about Krishna. And of course, Nanda Maharaj and all Krishna's associates, they were petrified of what Kali was going to do to Krishna. But anyway, <clears throat> Krishna danced on Kali's hoods. And he purified Kali. And then he, with one arm, he stretched his arm and he brought the gopis onto one of the hoods of Kali. And they started dancing. <laughs> One of the, the hoods of clear like a stage. And uh, it was a wonderful scene. Krishna was dancing with the gopis. And then Krishna took one of the um, shawls from one of the gopis and he threaded it through the nostrils of Kaliya. <laughs> <laughs> and he had it like a 
reins, you know, for a horse you have reins. So he was sort of <laughs> riding clear like that. So these are all inconceivable. But first of all we have to understand God is great. And God can do anything. But these pastimes, <clears throat> but Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are also so wonderful we should think about. Like when Sanam Goswami, he was um, visiting Lord Chaitanya in Jagannath Puri. And he contracted these sores on his body, which were very nasty. They were weeping sores, they didn't smell good. And Lord Chaitanya would embrace him. And the, and the excrement, whatever you call it, from these sores was going on Lord Chaitanya's body. And Sananga Swami was feeling so depressed because Lord Chaitanya was contaminating his body by embracing him and his body was being smeared with this poison from these sores. <clears throat> so he was very unhappy. So he decided, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to throw myself under the wrath cart and in that way, I'll go back to Godhead. But because Lord Chaitanya is also the super soul in everyone's heart, he knows what we're thinking. So he uh, admonished, chastised Sanat Goswami. He said, you cannot kill yourself. If I thought it was as easy as killing myself to get love of Godhead, I would kill myself thousands of times over. You cannot do that. Besides that, I have many things that I want to do through your body. So, ultimately what happened was that um, <clears throat> Sanat Goswami was feeling so bad, but Lord Chaitanya said that actually you are like my child, I'm like your mother, and your sores smell to me very beautiful. They smell like this special substance called Chatu Sama, which is made of sandalwood and camphor and something else. So, because you're like my children, just like the mother sees the child's stool when the child passes stool, she smells like sandalwood. Only the mother thinks like that. <laughs> to everybody else, <laughs> not very nice. But I don't think so. Huh? <laughs> I don't think so. You're not a mother yet. <laughs> so he said that <clears throat> I am like your mother, and these sores smell to me very nice. So Lord Chaitanya is so merciful, and Lord Chaitanya is giving love of God very easily just by chanting Hare Krishna. He's even giving it to the animals. So we worship Lord Chaitanya as Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Brahmadate Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaur to Shaitamaha. And he's very kind to the Brahmins and the cows. So throughout all of Krishna's pastimes, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, there's so much uh, mention of cows. So Lord Chaitanya is very kind to the cows and the Brahmins, but he's kind to everybody because anybody who hears the chanting of Hare Krishna or gives a donation, like Prabhupada said, that anybody who touches a book, when he was talking about book distribution, he said if, if anybody reads one line or one word of one of these books, they make so much advancement. And when they take one of our books into their home, they're actually Narayan, Krishna is living in their home. So that's why he emphasized the book distribution so much, because when somebody gets a book, they're on the way back to Godhead. So therefore, we should be very enthusiastic to chant Hare Krishna, to go out and chant in public. 
but also to distribute books. Because when somebody gets a book, Krishna is living in their home, he purifies their home, and uh, their home becomes like a temple. So, Krishna has... We can be attached to any form of Krishna. We can be attached to Lord Nishringadev. Some devotees, they have a special tendency for Lord Nishringadev. Some of them worship Lord Ram, and it's all glorious. But <clears throat> there's another book by Prabodha Nanda Saraswati Thakur. It's called the Chaitanya Chandramrita. Chaitanya Chandramrita. So Lord um, Prabodha Nanda Saraswati was the uncle of Gopala Bhatta. Hare Krishna. Does that mean I got to finish? Hey? Is that a sign to finish? No, I'm just saying goodbye because I won't see you. Where are you person. going out? Where are you going? Um, Sankatan in Swansea, we have to drop this hymn so no, off. Oh, okay. So I'll get to this class. All right, well, it's good to see you. Very nice to have you both down. I'll see you at the Rath Theatre. Yeah. All right, well. Good. So, what was I saying? She's my promoter. Oh, yeah, promoter and Sarah Swarov. He wrote that book. He was the uncle of Gopal Bhatta, who was the Father, no, whose father was Venkatabhata, who they had this conversation about, you know, actually not being able to enter the Rasadam. So Prabhupada Nandasuri in his book Chaitanya Chadamrita, he says basically, who cares about the incarnation of Lord Ram? Who cares about Lord Shri <laughs> Because Lord Chaitanya is the greatest incarnation. Because he's giving this love of Krishna. So, and you worship Lord Chaitanya by going on Sankirtan, by being a member of ISKCON, whether you're cleaning the floor, giving donations, uh, cooking, but cooperating with the movement that Srila Prabhupada created, you become very pleasing to Lord Chaitanya. So, you know, this is Lord Chaitanya's movement. <clears throat> this movement, Prabhupada said, will uh, spread to every town and village. People will be chanting Hare Krishna because Prabhupada was very ambitious. He wanted devotees to occupy posts of power, like political, political posts. One time in America in 1976, he was encouraging one devotee, Balavanta Prabhu, to become the mayor of Atlanta, to go into politics. He didn't really make it. Um, but, you know, Tulsi Gabbard, she's doing pretty well. She's got 1%. <clears throat> it's quite a lot of people. It's a few million. And uh, so we don't know what the future holds, but we know that if we serve Lord Chaitanya, whatever happens, we'll be protected. So we should always feel like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He was very happy when one of his disciples, an insignificant Brahmacharya, would go out and give out a few magazines in Navadweep. So if we can support the Sangitak and all go out ourselves chanting or distributing books, we get so much benefit. <clears throat> so I'll finish there. Hare Krishna. Any questions? <clears throat>